Every 40 seconds, someone in the U.S. has a stroke. Someone dies from a stroke every four minutes. Over 140,000 people die each year due to stroke. 795,000 people in the U.S. have a stroke each year. Over 600,000 of those are first-time strokes. There are over 6.5 million people in the U.S. who've ever had a stroke. One out of every thousand people will have a stroke in their lifetime. One in every 20 deaths are due to stroke. Strokes cost the U.S. an estimated $34 billion each year. Stroke is the leading cause for serious long-term disability. Strokes are the fifth leading cause of death in the U.S. However, worldwide, it is the second leading cause of death. A stroke is a cerebral vascular disease with a high mortality and morbidity. It occurs when oxygen-rich blood is blocked to a certain part of the brain. The two main types of strokes are ischemic and hemorrhagic. Ischemic is the more common type. Another condition that is similar is transient ischemic attack. These are referred to as TIAs or mini strokes. Symptoms mainly depend on what part of the brain is affected. These include sudden weakness, numbness, signs of paralysis, speech problems and trouble seeing, dizziness, trouble walking, and severe headaches. Usually, only one side of the body is affected. Nausea and vomiting are also possible symptoms. There are many risk factors for stroke. These include high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, and smoking. Other risk factors are alcohol and drug use, overweight and obesity, lack of physical activity, unhealthy diet, and stress and depression. Age, gender, race, and ethnicity have also shown to have varied stroke risk. Treatment for stroke include medication or medical procedures, and lifestyle changes and risk factor modification. For this video, we will take you through the progression of how hydrogen may potentially help. We'll go from general prevention all the way down to survival rate after a stroke, and all the steps in between. Prevention for strokes is something that everyone should be concerned about, not just for those with the risk factors or history of stroke. According to this, the message is clear. Upscale efforts to prevent stroke are urgently needed in all regions, as there is still no country in the world where the stroke burden is decreasing. In fact, the focus on clinical treatments alone will not reduce the burden of stroke. The emphasis needs to shift to acknowledge the importance of behavior change. The modification of risk factors are the main resource for effective prevention of stroke. It has even been estimated that with effective lifestyle changes, about half of all strokes may be prevented. It is now said that strokes should no longer be regarded as a disease for the elderly. Two-thirds of all strokes occur among people younger than the age of 70. In fact, preventive action should start early in life and continue throughout the life cycle. Now, hydrogen can aid in the prevention of strokes in many ways that will be elaborated throughout the duration of this video. A number of recent studies have revealed that stroke and oxidative stress are closely related. Excessive oxidative stress may have deleterious effects on clinical outcome in acute ischemic stroke. Therefore, antioxidants have been considered in prevention and treatment of stroke, and certain agents with antioxidant effects did have neuroprotective effects. If you've watched most of our videos, then you know that one of hydrogen's main benefits is the reduction of oxidative stress. It even says here that hydrogen may significantly reduce the possibility of stroke. Some of the bigger ways hydrogen can help with stroke prevention is aiding in the main risk factors of stroke. Risk factors are like warning signs that a more serious health issue, like stroke, could possibly occur. All these risk factors either have been or will be covered in more depth in this video series. First, a little background on stroke risk factors. Stroke prevention begins with recognition of its risk factors by a patient and clinician treating the patient. However, patient's awareness remains a limitation in the treatment of risk factors and most patients having a stroke have multiple risk factors. There is overwhelming scientific evidence that by modifying risk factors, the risk of stroke reduces greatly. These four lifestyle risk factors are of major importance for stroke. Tobacco use, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and harmful use of alcohol. Research shows that hydrogen can potentially mitigate the damaging effects associated with each of these risk factors. Hypertension or high blood pressure is the most prevalent modifiable risk factor for stroke. In fact, about 30% of the U.S. has high blood pressure. Hypertension is twice as important for stroke as it is for heart disease. This study explains that there is a direct and continual relationship between blood pressure and recurrent strokes. They even suggest that lowering blood pressure by 10 systolic and by 5 diastolic would result in a 40% lower risk of stroke death. 
The results from this article says that after treatment with hydrogen, high blood pressure generally decrease for the patients. And in some instances, patients reach normal tensive status. Hyperglycemia is also one of the major risk factors of mortality and morbidity after an ischemic stroke. In fact, according to this, impaired glucose tolerance doubles the risk of stroke. Diabetes even increases post-stroke mortality and adversely affects post-stroke outcomes as compared with stroke patients without diabetes. In this study, we see that hydrogen-rich water normalized the oral glucose tolerance test and may have a beneficial role in the prevention of insulin resistance. What's even more interesting is that the effect of H2 on high glucose levels was similar to that of a diet restriction. And here it says H2 therapy may reduce strokes in patients with metabolic syndrome involving diabetes. Unhealthy cholesterol levels may also be an indicator for increased stroke risk. This study observed that low HDL levels were associated with increased risk of stroke. This particular study concluded that supplementation of H2 seemed to decrease LDL levels and improve HDL function. So in general, hydrogen potentially benefits these risk factors, meaning it can benefit the risk of stroke and potentially even aid to prevent a stroke from occurring. Talking about blood clots is an important topic when discussing strokes. So in most cases, strokes are caused by a blood clot that is blocking a blood vessel in the brain. These clots can form in the brain itself, but they're more than likely formed in another part of the body, then get carried by the bloodstream to the brain. According to this, it is very uncommon for blood clots to develop in the blood vessels of healthy people. So again, a healthy lifestyle is important for reducing the risk of stroke. Here we see that hydrogen treatment improves blood flow. And here it says that hydrogen gas might be effective against blockage or closing of the corroded artery. And here we see that the treatment of hydrogen-rich water decreased the rate of blood cell clotting by 29%. Neuroprotection, as I'm sure you can imagine, is huge throughout the progression of stroke. The brain is one of the most susceptible organs to oxidative stress. The protection of the brain is beneficial whether you have a healthy lifestyle, risk factors present, or stroke history. Neuroprotection is an increasingly recognized management strategy in ischemic stroke. It promises to assist clinicians in reducing stroke mortality rates and improving quality of life of survivors. Here it says that hydrogen exhibits brain protective functions through anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-apoptotic effects. And here, inhalation of hydrogen gas decreased oxidative stress and exerted neuroprotective effects. This one says that there is substantial evidence that hydrogen provides neuroprotection of oxidative stress-induced damage in neurological diseases, such as cerebral ischemia. H2 also has neuroprotective effects against global ischemia. There is mounting evidence that gases such as hydrogen are able to provide neuroprotection after strokes. Here, hydrogen administration after epoxia appeared to provide brain protection. And here, hydrogen inhalation had an effect comparable to that of a neuroprotective drug used to treat cerebral infarction. There is increasing evidence suggesting that the blood-brain barrier disruption is the key factor for onset of stroke. Several studies have shown that blood-brain barrier disruption preceded stroke in hypertensive stroke-prone models. And here, it illustrates that hydrogen protects the blood-brain barrier. Sometimes people have typical signs of a stroke that goes away in a few hours. This may be a sign of a transient ischemic attack. This is also known as a TIA, or sometimes called mini-stroke. It is where the blood flow to the brain is temporarily blocked. It happens when a blood clot is formed but then breaks up again before the brain is damaged more severely. Every year in the U.S., 200,000 to 500,000 patients are diagnosed with having experienced a TIA. However, 300,000 to 700,000 people experience symptoms like a TIA but never seek medical attention for their symptoms. It may seem as though TIAs isn't too big of a deal. But having a TIA is a warning that the person is at risk of a more serious and debilitating stroke. Out of the people who have a TIA each year, one third of them will have a stroke sometime in the future. Without urgent evaluation and management, approximately 10% of patients with TIAs will have a stroke within 90 days. 50% of these events will occur within the first 48 hours. And approximately 15% of diagnosed strokes are preceded by TIAs. This study mentioned that hydrogen shows significant protective effects for TIAs. What is also interesting is that according to this, TIAs with proof of brain infarction have 20 times higher of a risk 
for stroke than having a TIA without tissue damage in the brain. But we see here that hydrogen gas was effective for the improvement of the brain tissue damage. So now we get into what an actual stroke looks like. Approximately 80% of all strokes are ischemic. Ischemic strokes results from an obstruction to the cerebral arteries. This blocks the blood flow to a portion of the brain causing brain tissue damage. Ischemia induces elevated production of ROS, which can damage cellular and extracellular elements. After ischemia, the restoration of blood called reperfusion is critical. However, the reperfusion causes additional damage, which can be more harmful than the ischemic stroke. Reperfusion itself generates an overproduction of ROS, leading to reperfusion injury. Well, here it says that H2 can significantly decrease the damage of cerebral ischemia reperfusion caused by oxidative stress. The major findings here were that hydrogen could reduce brain tissue damage and improve neurological function. And here it says hydrogen has antioxidant and anti-apoptotic activity that protect the brain against ischemia reperfusion injury and stroke. It stated here that hydrogen could be a novel therapeutic approach to enhance recovery of ischemic reperfusion injury. This study is really exciting though. It's a human clinical study on the effects of hydrogen on brain tissue damage after an ischemic stroke. The findings suggested that the tissue damage was milder and recovered more quickly in the H2 group than in the control group. On day three, a significant improvement on the stroke score in the H2 group was observed, whereas the stroke score became worse in the control group by this time. And then by day five, the recovery of the tissue damage already started to occur in the H2 group. In this study, they also demonstrated that hydrogen was more beneficial than an approved pharmaceutical drug for strokes. According to this, upon ischemic stroke onset, 8 to 30% of patients suffer hemorrhagic stroke. Due to its suppressive effects, the risk of brain hemorrhaging was decreased upon H2 administration. Hemorrhagic strokes are often more severe than ischemic strokes. It includes intracerebral and subarachnoid hemorrhages. The mortality rate of these hemorrhages have been reported as high as 40 to 50%. Survivors are commonly affected by chronic morbidity. Subarachnoid hemorrhages are typically due to a ruptured aneurysm. They account for 2 to 9% of all strokes. Accumulating evidence shows that early brain injury plays a big role in the prognosis of this type of hemorrhage. Injury occurs within the first 72 hours after the hemorrhage. Oxidative stress is a significant factor in this hemorrhage-induced injury. So research shows that the antioxidative agents may improve the outcome of patients with this hemorrhage. This study says all these findings make H2 a potentially perfect candidate to provide protective effects for the brain after subarachnoid hemorrhages. Why would it say that? Well, here it says the hydrogen could attenuate neuronal apoptosis in early brain injuries and improve the neurofunctional outcome after the hemorrhage. And here it says that administration of hydrogen abated the level of oxidative stress and brain edema following the hemorrhage and in the meanwhile alleviated the injury following the hemorrhage. These findings suggest that hydrogen could alleviate brain injury via decreasing oxidative stress and brain edema after hemorrhage. Hence, we concluded that hydrogen could be a potential therapeutic agent for early brain injury after subarachnoid hemorrhage. People who had a stroke are at greater risk of having another. About 40 out of every 100 people who survive a stroke have another one within the next 10 years. The risk is especially high within the first six months. Reoccurring strokes account for 25 to 30 percent of all strokes. They generally represent unsuccessful secondary prevention. Recurrent strokes are often more severe and disabling than initial strokes. Secondary stroke prevention strategies and risk factor treatment and management have been shown to reduce stroke reoccurrence. And again, we see that a healthy lifestyle not only helps to prevent initial stroke, but reoccurring strokes as well. We can also refer to the potential benefits of hydrogen for strokes we already talked about, like the potential benefits towards the risk factors, blood clot, and neuroprotection, and the benefits after TIA and stroke, and deduct that because of those things, it can potentially be beneficial for preventing secondary stroke. But one last benefit for intaking hydrogen gas is that it's easy. So the most important behavioral risk factors for stroke include smoking, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and alcohol abuse. These risk factors are responsible for about 80% of heart disease and stroke. Despite the improvements in treatment through medical advances and government targets, adherence to secondary prevention measures is reportedly low. 
In a study on 2,000 stroke patients, a quarter of them discontinued one or more of their secondary prevention medication within three months. And then after one year following the stroke, 22% of them continued to smoke. 36% remained obese and 4% continued to drink excessively. This suggests that the public's underappreciation of the potential seriousness of stroke may be a reason for decreased compliance with secondary stroke prevention measures. Why does this matter? Hydrogen administration can be a simple addition to a daily regimen. Lifestyle habits should be improved, but it's definitely hard for most. While working to improve the habits, hydrogen can potentially protect the body from some of the bad effects of those habits, which in turn can potentially help to aid in preventing or prolonging recurrent stroke. Stroke is the number one cause of long-term disability. Most people survive strokes. Strokes can affect patients physically, mentally, and emotionally, or a combination of the three. It can bring a heavy burden to society. Disability, handicap, or quality of life have a higher outcome in the impact of stroke. Numerous studies have identified that the severity in neuronal apoptosis is indirectly correlated with neural function, which suggests that apoptosis of neurons play an important role in the quality of life for a hemorrhagic stroke survivor. The results indicate that hydrogen might attenuate neuronal apoptosis specifically. This present study suggests that the ingestion of hydrogen water can improve neurological function outcome. This beneficial effect may be due to the attenuation of the blood-brain barrier disruption via reduction in ROS. So overall, the data suggests that hydrogen can potentially improve the quality of life of stroke patients. Stroke has approximately a 20% mortality rate within the first 30 days. An unhealthy lifestyle is not only associated with a higher risk of stroke, but also a higher mortality rate after stroke. Here it says that small doses of H2 can significantly reduce the mortality in cases of stroke that target the entire brain. Inhalation of hydrogen gas improved the survival rate from 8 to 50% following the stroke. And finally, the results here suggest that hydrogen treatment improved neurological function intended to improve overall survival. Okay, so if you're still watching, thank you. Living in the U.S., strokes are something we hear about all the time. Hopefully this video was useful in unpacking the seriousness of it. In the time since you've been watching this video, approximately 26 people had a stroke. In the same amount of time, approximately four people died from a stroke. Be sure to share this video. Maybe one day we can help those numbers go down with hydrogen. And that's your dose of H2 in two to 20 minutes.